In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new updates that came out as part of Power BI's March 2023 update, including things like the in-object formatting to new action buttons like apply filters or clear filters. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Renan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the feature summary for this month is actually pretty exciting. There's quite a lot of new exciting features and I'm really excited to have a look and cover them. So let's get started with this new ability to apply all your slicer filters as a button action. So basically, if you worked with Power BI before and you've tried to make a selection on your slicer filters or maybe select a value or a chart within your report, all the visuals within the report page where you made the selection will have its data automatically updated. And if you have multiple slicers available in your page, this feature allows your users to make a selection on all of those filters. And when it's ready, you click simply this button to update all of the visuals. One of the reasons to do this is to reduce the number of queries being sent back to the source. So instead of updating the data in the page multiple times, every time you make a selection, you simply add this button so that those refreshes don't happen. And it only happens once, only when they select that button. And if you're looking for tips on how to reduce the number of queries being sent back to the source when you're using a direct uh, query type of data source. Another easy feature that you can apply or disable is the ability to cross filter and cross highlight automatically across your different uh, visuals. This prevents your visuals from automatically updating every single time you make a selection within your page. And I'm gonna try to cover some optimization tips for reducing your number of queries in a future video. Next is a small update on the design of the format page. So it looks like they've updated the styles to make it easy to distinguish the options within the expand icons. On object interaction is a new feature that allows you to edit and manage your formatting styles directly next to your visual. So currently, if you have visuals that you want to format, you always have to go to the format pane on the right hand side, make changes there and then look back into your visual. Now with this new feature, you simply select your visual and as you select them, you will have uh, new formatting options as a pop up menu next to your visual. So you will have some ability to to change your chart type or maybe update the field wells within your report. And it looks like you can even select individual elements in your charts and edit them directly, which is a lot more intuitive than going to the format pane and looking for the right formatting style. Just be aware though that this is still a preview feature um, and it won't be automatically available. So if you want to opt in and try out this new feature, you need to make sure that you enable it in the preview settings. There are new improvements to the visual containers that you can put in your reports. First is you can now add subtitles underneath your titles, which allows you to add more context to the visual that you're showing. There are other improvements too, like being able to add a divider between your titles and your visual. And there's also a way to now add more padding or custom padding in between your regions, like your title, your subtitle and your visuals. But what I'm really excited about is this subtitle, which sounds a little bit weird, but let me explain why. First, if you you look at the formatting settings here for the subtitle, it looks like you can conditionally format your values here. Now this opens up a lot of opportunities like adding more context to your reports. And you could really show you know, so many different things with this subtitle, like you know, being able to show the last refresh date or maybe even smart narratives. Another thing is that this ability to add subtitles is actually a best practice technique outlined by the IBCS, which is a standard for building good reports design and uh, trying to create your own subtitles within your Power BI reports uh, wasn't really possible. You kind of had to mess around with overlapping visuals. But now with this, we can easily build reports or visuals that are IBCS compliant to sort of best practices standards. 
Next is the storytelling in PowerPoint, which is the ability to embed live Power BI reports into your PowerPoint slides. It's a feature that was released not so long ago. Now it's generally available to use, so you don't really need to opt in to use this feature. I covered it in a video recently, but the key highlights well, of what you can do with this feature is the ability to embed live full page reports into your slides. You can also embed individual visuals, so you can pin them individually with pre-filtered selections. And you can also add some smart narratives to tell a story about your data in sort of natural language format. I think this feature is a great addition to your arsenal as a Power BI developer. I've worked with so many clients before where we create for them, you know, rich interactive reports that they're able to filter and slice the data for themselves, only for them to take those visuals out of Power BI, take screenshots, put it into PowerPoint deck as static images. And if you imagine as someone who needs to report on these kind of data on a regular basis, like on a monthly basis, it means that for every single month, they'll need to create a new PowerPoint slide to take those static images from my Power BI report all over again. This live connection means that your data is always up to date, filtered in the right way, and inherits all the security permissions that you applied in your Power BI report. And all of this in the familiar space of PowerPoint. So your customers don't even need to go to Power BI to work with the data in it. So if you're not really familiar with this feature and you want to learn more about it, I did cover it in a separate video not so long ago. So check it out if you haven't yet. Multiple audiences for Power BI apps is now generally available. Now this feature flew under my radar um, and I didn't even know that it existed. So I assume you know what organization apps are in Power BI and it's not the mobile app for Power BI. If you're not too familiar with it, I did cover it in a separate video. But basically this is a feature that allows you to bundle up your reports into sort of app that users can go into to see a collection of reports with all the pages you know, and other links that you might have like you know, uh, URL links, or maybe even other images or you know, reports from different places. Now with this multiple audiences uh, feature, you can now show or hide pages based on who you assign to these different audiences. I think this is a great feature that allows developers to create different views for the same app with pages hidden or shown, depending on what they are sort of meant to have access to. So it's sort of a native way to apply page level security on your reports without having to create individual reports for those different audiences. And that's really it for the updates that I wanted to cover for this month. Now, as usual, there are way more updates and features that came out as part of this month's updates, but I didn't call over all of them, I only covered the ones that are pretty interesting to me. So if you're interested to know what else came out uh, this month, I'll leave a link to the blog post to it in the description box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.